Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you the Intel or previously called Altera FPGA developing workflow. We will go through Cortex Prime IDE and use the Intel Max 10 evaluation board for demonstration. We will look at a couple of Max 10's unique features and how to incorporate the basic Cortex IPs into our project. Now let's start. We are using the 10M50D Max 10 development board. There are several versions of the board. You can find more information from Intel's website. You can download the complete development documents from there. Just make sure you download the file matching your board. So this is the board we are going to use. You can go down here to download the complete kit installation. The schematic is included in the download. We will exercise some of the buttons and LEDs in our demo. Another very useful document is the Max 10 configuration user guide. All the important information in there to get you started. Max 10 is Intel's low cost FPGA line. The unique feature is its built in flash memory. So, not like other FPGA, you have to attach a boot flash for the FPGA to work. Max 10 can work by itself. This is a single chip solution. It also has very strong built in security features. In this video, we will look at the chip ID IP and the dual configuration IP. The chip ID IP can read the unique device ID from the FPGA chip. You can put two configurations in the chip's flash memory and use the dual configuration IP to instruct the chip put from either one. There's a code example in the download. The simple project with a top IP pins wrapper file. We can go from here. In the quarters prime, we can open that project. As you can see in the readme file, the DDR3 pins in the top file will cause the comparison error. So we are going to remove that. Here is the original top file from the download package. To exercise the IP mentioned earlier, I already modified the top file to include the IPs. As you can see, I have already removed the DDR pins and I also removed the ADC pins. We will going to do another demo later to exercise the ADC function. I add version to compare the two images. Uh, I add the chip ID IPs here to read the unique ID from the device. Then I toggle the LED uh, the plan is to make two images with the different speed of the LED toggling. I add the dual configuration IPs here. I'm going to use the source and prop IP to trigger the image loading. All the bits mapping in this Avalon memory map IP interface are list in this user guide. The dual configuration IP are wrapped in a state machine wrapper that exercise the Avalon memory map interface to trigger the image loading. All the design files can be found in my GitHub link show in the description below. In the quarters, we will need to include all our files into this project. That's the original project. We will remove that. We will add our modified top file here. We will add the state machine wrapper here. 
in the IP catalog, we're going to add the chip ID IP. We will create the IP in our IP subfolder so the project is well organized. The quarters will load the Mega Wizard and configure the IP. As you can see, the IP is very simple. You just provide a clock reset and the IP will query the ID from the device and generate the output. So after you create IP, you need to include that in the project. As you can see, the IP is already included. Now we are going to add the dual configuration. The dual configuration IP will open the platform designer to configure IP. We will also save the IP in our IP subfolder. Our clock is 50 Mac. Now you generate the wrapper and IP. For the IP generates in the platform editor, you need to manually add that in your project. Now we are going to add a source and prop. This is the same as the Xilinx VIO IP. To read the IDs and control the dual configuration, we will need to use 76 bits of the prop and 2 bits of the source. The ID actually use 64 bits, so we also add the ID valid bit here and the version number we put to identify the image. You will also need to add this IP in the project. So before we can load really two images, you need to configure the device mode as internal configuration and two images from the device and pin option. For the first image, we will use version 1 and doing some fast LED toggling. Everything should be good now. We can compile the whole project. Now the first image is done. It's in the output file folder. We just need to rename this file and recompile the other one. The SOF file is the SRAM configuration file directly loading from the JTAG. Now we will modify the version as 2 and do a 
slow LED toggling. Then we just need to recompile. Now the second image is also done. We will rename that again. It doesn't really matter, but just to be clear. Now we have two SOF files. If you just use the JTAG to load the SOF file in the board, that can be done. But every time you power cycle, it will lose that. So we need to program a POF file to save in the fresh memory. To do that, we will use the convert programming file function to generate the POF file and select the internal configuration. We can name the output file as we need. Now we need to add the SOF file. In the two pages, the page zero is the CFM zero. We then add another pages to hold the CFM one. Now two images are in the POF file. So as you can see, it generates a POF file as we need. We will load this file on the board. Now we can program the flash into the board. We will need to select the USB blaster. We will need to add the file. As you can see, it's already recognized as two images in the flash file. We just load everything. Once it's done, it start putting the CFM zero, which is the fast toggling LED images. This is controlled by the config select pin on the schematic, which is the deep switch here. So when it's power up, it samples the select pin and go to either images. In our demo, we internally overwrite this config select information and trigger a reconfiguration. So if you go to the images we specified, for that purpose, we can open the in system source and prop editor. As you can see the one prop and one source here. For the prop, actually we are detecting the device ID. So right now the image is loading 01, the version. The ID is valid. The total ID is this number. On the source, we can control the bits here to load the other images. So to load the second image, we will enable the pin. Now it loads the CFM1. As you can see, the version is actually 
zero two read from the image. Now, if you want to change back to image zero, the CFM zero, we will do it reload the CFM zero, the fast toggling image. As you can see, that's image CFM zero. The other way to confirm we have a dual images in the flash is we can power down. As you can see here, right now, right now the config select pin is at zero. We can change that to one. And power up, it should put the CFM1. Okay, so that's all for today's demo. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.